Good morning and welcome to our daily Eucharist. It's uh, April the 3rd. Uh, we're outside again. It's beautiful weather and it seems appropriate to do that. We're approaching uh, Holy Week with all that that entails, all the in intensity, uh, the emotion, the drama. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So as we begin our service, we're going to say that prayer that we do every Eucharist as a start with. It's the collect of purity. And I've got here the, the words, if you don't know them, or you can, down, you can download them. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I picked uh, the 23rd Psalm as our opening reading, and then from St John's Gospel, there, there's a great dialogue of, of the, the supper with Christ on the night before he was betrayed, and I've taken one of those uh, paragraphs, few lines from that, where Jesus talks uh, about himself as the way, the truth and the life. So as we come before him, mindful that he is our Lord, he is our saviour, he's the one who holds everything together. Let's lean on him, let's put aside sin, let's seek renewal every day, let's come to him who wants to give us our daily bread and wants us to know God as Father, Abba. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth and the life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you make all things new. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy upon us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to that most wonderful gift of eternal life. Amen. And so the, the gathering prayer for today, I'm using the fifth Sunday of Lent prayer for Passion Tide. Merciful God, loving Father, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus delivered and saved healed the world. Grant that by faith in him who suffered upon that cross, we too may triumph in the power of his victory. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So um, we're going to hear from the scripture. I'm going to read it o over here in the uh, little bit of the veranda and then after that and a brief reflection I'll light a candle um, for, for our prayers today. And so the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You lay a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of the, my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord with my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Now, Thomas, one of the disciples, said to him, Lord, we, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Well, that text would give us great confidence, shouldn't it? Um, Jesus describing himself as the way, the truth and the life. Before we were called Christians, in the first generation of the church, we were known as the way, the hodos, uh, the people of the path, the people of not a way, but the way. That's where, it's where we get the word orthodoxy from, uh, following the, the right path, giving the right glory to, to God. Um, so Jesus describes himself as that pathway. Do you know what the difference is between a maze and a labyrinth? Uh, a maze will have lots of dead ends. It is to, uh, it, it is kind of created in the sense to uh, to defeat to defeat you. Whereas a labyrinth, even if there's a raging minotaur, is essentially one path uh, that's that's been carefully um, pushed and woven and turned uh, so that it feels like a maze but in fact when you're in a labyrinth you're going into the center and then from the center you're going out there's no dead ends and so when Jesus says that he is the way he's talking about it in that way when Jesus says that he is the life he doesn't mean uh, just the nine to five ordinary stuff the, the Greek word used it isn't bios um, the, the, the ordinary biology of stuff. It's Zoe, the deep life, uh, the deep life that surely we all kind of ache for. I mean, that's one of the things they say about modern life, that until a few weeks ago, particularly when th these things weren't really in our face, we, we lived in a meaning crisis. Uh, perhaps we still do, but I think at least we're, we're a lot more aware of it now. We lived in a meaning crisis where we had all the gadgets, every, and I love gadgets. Um, we had everything we could possibly want uh, in here in our Western way of life. Uh, and yet we lacked so often meaning. It seemed to me so um, almost opposite that the, the roof of our greatest cathedral in Europe fell down uh, a year ago uh, in, in Holy Week. Uh, the roof fell in, but the structure was was still there, uh, as if the, the the very kind of weight uh, of our of our own confusion brought everything down. Uh, and then Jesus says that he's the truth, uh, not a truth. I mean, we're we're island people as Brits, so we. We like to think of, you know, each man's his own pope, each man's his own authority. But Jesus says that he is the truth, not a truth, um, not just a fact, but the very meaning of life. Uh, not a, a truth that is a stick that is to be banged over us, but a truth that is engaging uh, and that wants us to flourish uh, and to be transformed. I'll conclude. I've got this lo lovely um, cross that, um, in fact, I've had it on a shelf, but for many years I had it on my bedside and I must put it back by my bedside cabinet. Um, and it has the words of the 23rd Psalm. I don't know if this will focus in well, um, but it was uh, it was given to me 
from my last parish, which some of you will know, uh, was a parish in an urban priority area with many challenges. And there was a, a, a young girl in our Sunday school, a teenager, who had quite a challenging life. Uh, and at times she could be quite a handful. Uh, and I, I was greatly touched by, by this, this gift. It was a sort of leaving gift that we got from, from her. And it has the words of the 23rd Psalm. So this is something that um, I try uh, as much as I can to say in my head before I go to sleep, the words of the 23rd Psalm, uh, that, that sense that God is walking with me, drawing me, even through dark times. I know that he's preparing a table for me uh, and that really I, I have nothing to fear. I just have to reach out to him and, and feel and know his presence. Well, let, let us pray. And I'm going to light this candle. Uh, at this time, I, I've been asked, I'm not going to name them out, but I've been asked to pray for a number of individuals. Uh, and the, the pattern seems to be that there, there are people who have had uh, illness of recent time or treatment, cancer treatment um, or real frailty. Uh, and this coronavirus pandemic uh, feels to them and to their relatives as if they're being pushed further down uh, and what we want to do in prayer is is the reverse is to lift them to lift them up because we believe in a supernatural God in a loving father so I pray for all those who are coming into this pandemic time already with existing illness and maybe that's yourself or someone you know but certainly we've been asked to pray. Francis and I have been asked to pray for a number of people. and We want to hold them in prayer today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I'm going to put on my uh, holy vestments, my alb and my stole now. Mindful, as always, of all those who are putting on uh, special equipment today, special clothing to protect themselves from this terrible virus. Uh, th those who are at the front line, even those and particularly those at the front line in our in our shops, in our garages, um, who are keeping some of the basics, daily breads of life accessible to us. So when I put on uh, the, these vestments, I'm remembering them and praying for their protection during this difficult task. Scripture tells us to put on Christ and that is what we should all do as Christians. Let's go to the altar. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Heavenly Father, it is right and proper that we should give you thanks for the great gift of Christ, the way, the truth and the life. The one who has come to draw us into the, the very depths of a communion, of a fellowship with you. The one who told us that your house has many rooms, that your heart is infinite. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name. 
ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death upon the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for all for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice and praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this sacred bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be able to stand here and to serve you, to be in your presence. Send your Holy Spirit upon all your people and gather into one in your kingdom forever and ever. Amen. So let's say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy and blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Lord Jesus, you humbled yourself. You took the form of a servant and in obedience died upon that terrible cross, all for our salvation, all for our healing. Give us the mind to follow you, to be able to proclaim you as the one Lord and the one true King. 
Well, thank you again for watching. Uh, and as you can see, we're sort of slightly upping the science of this. Uh, and I'm very grateful that I've been lent these, these radio mics so I'm not tripping over wires. I hope the sound is okay. Uh, our test run yesterday seemed to be that um, they, they worked very well. So um, we shall check on that in a minute and we shall upload this also onto dailywithgod.co.uk so it's available in the next few minutes uh, as well on the website as well as on social media. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.